Well, it really is, is shocking news. Uh, you know, John Horgan was uh, struggling with his third bout of cancer. He took a leave from his ambassadorship to Germany in June. Uh, he had actually just arrived back in Victoria on th uh, last week. And I talked to Sheena McConnell, who was his former press secretary when he was in the premier's office, and she said she just saw him Thursday. So definitely no indications that this was these were his final days. And it's hitting people very hard. He was a very popular premier. He had the gift of the gab. He was gregarious and uh, and certainly uh, you know reached out across party lines with with that personality. So people are are, are shook right now, and it certainly is a sad day. Right, and at the time, um, you know, when he uh, was diagnosed and announced his third diagnosis in June, he said, I'm on leave from my position at the embassy in Germany and in hospital receiving immunotherapy uh, to treat uh, this new thyroid cancer and had been quiet um, throughout the year. And he began his uh, exit from politics, of course, last year. I don't know if you remember his farewell speech, Katie, uh, as you said, gift of the gab, right? Um, and uh, that live long and prosper quote uh, was certainly a favorite one of his. Can you tell us what you recall of that? I mean, certainly the Star Trek references were always flying. Uh, and, you know, I, during that farewell speech, I mean, there were so many people that he had to thank, you know, right down to he, you know, recalled, uh, uh, you know, a, a person who he helped clean up the side of the road on the, the, the highway from Souk to Langford. You know, he would volunteer at the, the, the local food bank in Langford. He just spent a lot of his time, you know, he was known as John from Langford, but obviously his reach went far beyond that. He often referred to his Irish roots. He kind of joked that he'd be the, the ambassador to Ireland. That may have been his first pick. Uh, his, his parents or his family was from Cork and he spoke a lot about his ties there. And you know, there was a, really an evolution of John Horgan from NDP leader when he was in opposition. And, and, you know, sometimes he got the nickname Angry John because, uh, but he kind of evolved to, from that to the, the, the corny dad jokes, especially during the pandemic. We heard a lot of off the cuff dad jokes from Horgan. And, you know, some of them got, uh, got him into hot water. He famously uh, accidentally uh, uttered the F word in the legislature. But again, he, he came back from that. He, he apologized and, you know, tempers get the better of you. But, you know, I, I, I know I saw a tweet from from Kevin Falcon, his political adversary, former BC Liberal, BC United leader, and he said, even though we disagreed in the legislature, we could have a laugh outside. And that was really the theme with John, is he knew how to connect with people, especially on the campaign trail. I mean, in 2020, he called a snap election, and it, mm -hmm. he returned the NDP's largest ever majority. So obviously, he was able to, to connect with voters as well as his political rivals and his political uh, friends. Right. And uh, as you say, when he returned in, in 2020, that was a controversial decision to call that snap election. And let me just read a, a statement here from Premier David Eby, who, of course, succeeded John Horgan after he stepped down as premier. And the statement, uh, part of it says the news of John Horgan's passing this morning in Victoria leaves us with heavy hearts. John loved this province and its people. He sought to address injustice wherever he saw it, using his time in office to help build a better, stronger British Columbia for everyone. His many accomplishments as premier will be felt for years and generations to come. His achievements are too numerous to mention, but he was a consequential premier at a critical time in our history. He encouraged us all to strive to be our better selves. That uh, statement coming from Premier David Eby this morning on the news that uh, former BC NDP Premier John Horgan has passed at the age of 65. And Katie DeRosa is with me, CBC uh, legislative reporter. Katie, what do you see as, as Horgan's legacy? He became Premier after that incredibly tight 2017 election, um, uh, signed a, a, a CASA agreement with the BC Green Party. Uh, since then, what, what do you see as his biggest achievements? Uh, well, again, certainly people remember him walking into, you know, the lieutenant governor's uh, mm -hmm. uh, room or house with Andrew Weaver, signing that agreement. Uh, you know, uh, the, even before then, him and Andrew Weaver were seen at, at a, a rugby game, and that was a little bit of a sign that they might be working together. And and since then, I mean, I, 
uh, John Horgan was was proud of of his uh, legacy in terms of what the province did through COVID, uh, what the province did for for the labor movement, and so those were some of his uh, accomplishments as well as an accomplishment of um, uh, progress for for Indigenous children and signing the uh, the United um, the Declaration for the Rights of Independent uh, Independent um, sorry the Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Mm -hmm. Those are some of his proudest achievements, and and you know again he he talked about the pride in in bringing up some of the more junior members of the legislature. He had a very gender balanced cabinet and there were a lot of cabinet ministers who looked to him as a, a mentor. Uh, even uh, his successor in uh, Langford, Wanda Fuca, Ravi Parmer, uh, said he first met uh, John Horgan when he was in uh, elementary school and, and John was a, a mentor to him ever since then. So I think that is, is a legacy is how much time John would take with individuals to, to mentor them and, and just to give them give them his time. So I, I really think that that was something that uh, spoke to his character. Even with journalists, he was, uh, you know, friendly and, and, and again, always had uh, the gift of the gab and, and, and an anecdote, really. He would tell you about his, you know, his personal life and his, his kids. Uh, when he retired, he, he said he took a walk on the beach with mm -hmm. Ellie and, and, you know, they were skipping rocks and they said, we want to have more of this. So, I mean, it, it is sad that he didn't get more of those moments on the beach. But again, with his wife, Ellie, she was the love of his life. He uh, would, would say that they marked their anniversary, that, you know, they count their anniversary in hours uh, to the hour of, of when they got engaged and when they got married. So really his, his relationship with his wife.